Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including Craig of the Creek, which we'll be getting into right now. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Michelle Ander. Hello. And Alex Bonilla. Hola. Uh, yes, Craig of the Creek. We are back to talk uh, the latest five episodes of Craig of the Creek, the ones that vaguely aired in February. Um, these episodes are Bug City, Deep Creek Salvage, The Shortcut, Dibs Court, and The Great Fossil Rush. The Great Fossil Rush aired on Monday of this week. I know that we're kind of in the middle of a weekly run of Craig episodes. We didn't really know that it would continue into March until this week, but we're very excited that episodes will continue into March. So we'll have another batch to talk about at the end of March. But here we have these latest five to get into. We talk Craig at the end of uh, every kind of batch of episodes. Although this time Cartoon Eric really actually did release this show weekly and did not put it on the app first. So um, th- this is, uh, I think that was pretty fun watching Craig weekly all of February and Monday. Days, and we'll get into these five episodes. Spoilers for these and all previous episodes of Craig of the Creek and find our previous Craig discussions at OverlyAnimated.com, on iTunes at OverlyAnimated.com slash iTunes, or YouTube at YouTube.com slash OverlyAnimated. Um, okay, let's get into these. Overall, Michelle, what did you think of these five episodes? I, I liked them. <laughs> They're a good time. I mean... Okay, I'm trying to think of a way to phrase this that we haven't said, like, the last five podcasts, mm-hmm. but the show is very good. It has very consistent quality. I love that we're revisiting characters. Um, we have, like, a couple new characters and some that, like, I feel bad. I forget the name of the, like, the the the, the really short kid who's really into candy Bobby, who has the Bobby. green hoodie yeah Bobby I really I'm starting to really like Bobby I really like the Bobby's troll everywhere. kid he's great okay. yeah but I feel like I noticed him more at this point than I used to because he was so in the background um but yeah all these episodes were very fun I'm glad that we're kind of repurposing some things like I really liked Dibs core and just talking about the strum and this idea of like oh how do you claim anything and also like is it was is this always been theirs um but yeah thumbs up thumbs up to these episodes good time all around yes good time all around Craig says Michelle okay yes um, Alex what do you think of these five um, I think on the whole, I enjoyed them. Um, Bug City and The Shortcut are the ones that stand out to me as my favorites of this batch. Um, I think it, there, there's a Jason episode with Fossil Rush, and I've always had a tough time with Jason, but Jason. I think that the, this is probably one, one of the better Jason episodes, I, I guess. Now, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I think... Think I, I think I'm safe saying that Dibs Court might be the first bad episode of the Whoa. show. Like, <gasps> uh, like, look, all I, right. I, I did not, I, I did not have fun at all watching that. I'm sorry. So, it was like, painful. I will admit, like, it's painful that no matter how compelling Craig's testimony was, that kid just be like, I called Dibs though, and the co- the jury would be like, Oh yeah, that, no, that checks out. <laughs> yeah, like I'm sure th- 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 there are kids that exist like this, but at the same time, it's like. Ta- it's like the, your main character of your episode is a brick wall. I don't know how I how I want to watch eleven minutes of that. So like I, I think that there's something off with Dibs Court that I haven't felt in previous episodes of this show. So that's like the one black mark of this of uh, this batch. But uh, it's it's still on the whole pretty good. But I uh, I think there are definitely episodes that's that uh, keep up the role that craig has been on and there are others that are that in their effort to continue making new characters at some point there had to be a a wall to hit and i guess that this is like the first one that just doesn't that kind of like drags down the episode on the whole i think he's an intentionally bad character uh but but is that good to be intentionally right. bad? i mean that, that's right that, that's a legitimate discussion um question yeah uh, i i i wouldn't call dibs court bad i still think like there's no bad episodes of craig but there's i think that is one of my lesser favorites uh, it's, i agree it's kind of the 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 one i enjoyed the least of the five but it's complicated because you're supposed to be frustrated by it but did they overdo it you know etc um i think i think this is a, another solid batch of episodes for craig these five episodes um i think a little bit we're still a little bit down from maybe the height of the show with you know 10 15 episodes prior in the uh the doorway to helen and kid from 30 30 range um i think this is a little on par with last batch which um is like maybe very good but not super great um i have interestingly i have different favorite episodes by the two 
by far to me that stood out the most are Deep Creek Salvage and The Great Fossil Rush. I think those are pretty excellent episodes. Um, I'm not super high on Dibs Court or Bug City, although I think there's Bug City is a, a solid episode. Um, the shortcut's also really fun. Uh, that'd be my third favorite probably, but, uh, I, I love certain aspects of Deep Creek, Deep Creek Salvage and Great Fossil Rush, especially, particularly the Kelsey segments of those. So I think that's not surprising, <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah, I think there's, uh, some, some really good, good stuff in, in these episodes and some interesting things to get into. Um, Tempted to lead with shipping here. Got to say, this is a very no! sh- this is a very wow. sh- this is a very no! shippy batch. If you talk about Kit and Craig, I swear, well, yes, I'll throw what something. It, the, Michelle, it, the, the episode ships no, them. The grandma, no, grandma ships. No, the, what do you the mean? grandma no. is irrelevant. When she, she <laughs> Kit was indignant when she told her not to sell her heart to Craig. Don't call grandma she, irrelevant. She's not on her mind. The, she, Kit is too busy being a business person. I agree with about that. that nonsense. I agree, I agree with that, but that doesn't mean we can't think about it. No. <laughs> the minute I saw it, I knew this discussion was coming. <laughs> how, how about the, it, it, let, 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 let's s- settle down, everyone? Let's talk about a good ship. Let's talk about Kelsey and Wilderness. Okay, that's, that's, that's this is the, look, <laughs> those, those are the two big. Pa- okay, we are leading with shipping since Michelle was so adamant about it. <laughs> two big pairings have blossomed. These this group of episodes. Let's lead with Kelsey and Wilderness from Monday's episode. Wow, what a we have been truly blessed with this fantastic ship. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Uh, this is everything we've wanted. Uh, the, the Kelsey and Wildernessa. Kelsey's huge crush on Wildernessa comes out in this episode. Uh, Michelle, what, what did you? What did you, was your reactions when you saw that? Oh, it was so funny. I mean, I loved how in sync they were imagining this post-apocalyptic world where they're going to have to align themselves with the new <laughs> ultimate predator, and they both latch on to dragons and start thinking of like, oh yeah, it's going to have like a skull helmet and like extra teeth and wings. Yeah, they're like, oh, that's so cool. Because like for a while, wilderness always seemed as this kind of untouchable, like wise forest like goddess and kelsey's just kind of in awe of her but that was the first time they really clicked on the same wavelength so that was really nice to see i'd like to see them become closer over time but yeah kelsey's crush way on display total blush moment it was it was great yeah alex what was your reactions yeah, I was just uh, I was pumped that like Kelsey was like, oh, I'm gonna try acting cool for Wilderness. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> because, like well Wilderness is obviously the peak of coolness in this creek. So <laughs> and uh, and yeah, just the, the also like their whole aesthetic works where like Wilderness is basically Princess Mononoke and uh, Kelsey is the, the brave knight. So like they 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 fit together very well and they would be a strong power couple if they yeah. defended the creek together. So I, I think it's great. And it, it ends perfectly with like, hey, did she wave at me? I think she waved at me. <laughs> it's like, it, it, it's the perfect way to end that scene. So yes, but it, it was it was cute. And I, I the Wildernessa is great. There should be more of her. So I like when she comes up. Yeah, I think this was only her second appearance. I don't even know if she was even in the background. Of previous. I may, maybe I'm wrong, but I th- definitely like since her first major appearance since the Wilderness episode. Um, yeah, this came out of nowhere for me. I was all on the uh, Kelsey and Stax ship, and boy, I was I I was wrong. This is this is the way place to be, Kelsey and uh, Wilderness mm-hmm. here, because this uh, two minute scene really steals or whatever steals this episode. Uh, Kelsey, I was I think the shocking thing is just how blatant Kelsey's crush is uh, in in the scene. Like uh, this is. Uh, you know, this show has had some pretty blatantly gay stuff before, but this is, uh, like involving, uh, main character and, uh, you don't, you never see like kids, uh, displaying, uh, like same sex feelings. Like this just never happens. And, uh, and, you know, Loud House, uh, some things, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty fantastic here with, uh, with Kelsey's crush, multiple blushes. She says, uh, "Hey, uh, what's up?" Uh, to to <laughs> Vanessa. Uh, <laughs> so the the classic cool. opening line to a crush. Hey, yeah. what's up? <laughs> <laughs> they have their uh, dragon fantasy. Yeah, it's great. Um, she, Wildernessa says, "Good luck to Kelsey." And goes, did you, did you went back? Uh, I think she went back. She's so cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah that's what she says she's blushing the whole time like hugging herself right it's, it's wow uh the best scene in the show <laughs> where's the follow-up episode i want it now like i'm sure uh, i'm sure we'll get it yeah. in about like 20 episodes uh, the yeah. next time wildernessa comes up in the cycle <laughs> yeah do, do we think wildernessa likes kelsey back i think not yet yeah like, she doesn't know her that well 
she considers her a knight to the forest and she considers herself like the queen so there needs to be like some further um relation relation going on before she can consider kelsey on her level you know yeah she has to work her way up yeah we need a uh, a quest them going on a quest um there's a kelsey Uh, alone episode coming up i saw so i wonder if wildernessa could be in that episode that would be that'd be great um but yeah, that 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 was fantastic. And yes, the other romance, as discussed, is <laughs> Craig and Kit. That's Kitch. not romance. People were shipping it already. I, I know. I, I think know, we mentioned but... it on the podcast before. Um, we know Michelle's feelings, it... Alex. <laughs> 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 to, to, do, do you, are you also adamantly anti Craig and Kit? Kit, Kit is uh, you are a notable Kit Stan. Yes, I I enjoy Kit very much, and uh, she, she voices Kelly on Star, so like it, it's a, it's a strong connection that I have. But um, I, I'm not anti the ship, but I re- but I respect Kit a lot for her immediate reaction to the grandma's like making that very like when whenever old people see a girl and a boy together, like oh they should be so fri- like true. close friends and boyfriends, so and so like. True. Kit, so Kit is very quick to be shut that down. Like, ew, no. So like, uh, I appreciate Kit for that. Now, if something developed down the road, I wouldn't be opposed to it. But I like that we're not st- we're not starting off with that just because the two characters are paired off. Like, it doesn't need to be that right now. So I'm 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 fine with the way it happened. Just like men- men- mentioning it as an offhand joke, Kit rejecting it, and we move on. Yeah, I, I love how it's handled because uh, I'm fully on board on the ship, and uh, this is a seven season slow burn ship. This is like uh, oh, <laughs> please no. This is, this is look, it's it's great. They're just they're focused on their own things. You know, Kit's running her business, and Craig is uh, doing Craig stuff. And uh, it's not like any of that. They not like either have a conscious crush on each other. Although I think there's an argument that Kit is a little bit crushing on Craig. Um, well, no, no. I, actually, I would make not. Uh, I would make the argument that it's actually Craig who has the crush Ooh. on Kit because at at the very end, there's the, like he delivers the line of like, "Hey, can I get a cut?" Like he says it in a very weird way that makes me think that there's some hidden feelings under there, and Kit is like, "No." So like she is all about the business. Craig is the one who thinks he can get some sort of like deeper connection with kit and kit is like no so i i think that it's one-sided but in the opposite direction that you're thinking wow i like that hashtag analysis that was fantastic uh please oh, <laughs> we God. need to dive we need to dive deeper into the ship i think uh, we need to go uh, even uh michelle please uh, join the analysis here huh? <laughs> in, in what way <laughs> it's not <laughs> worth <laughs> analyzing there's so much more going on in these episodes it, explain why kit is in love with business because she's really good at it and it gives her a sense of achievement and she gets to like do it on her own terms, which she probably doesn't get to do in a lot of the parts of her life because she's still a kid. And, you know, when you're a kid, you really struggle with having autonomy and her business is one thing she has full control over. She's making a profit. She gets to see all the other kids like it's a great it's a great situation. Yeah, and she's like, she has no she has a monopoly on it. There's no competitors in the yes, creek. It's just yes. her. That's- it's great. That, so that's that, all she needs. So you're saying that we're teaching the kids um, capitalism and monopolies with with kids. Yes. Uh, but yes. No. That we're, that is we're also good analysis. Them so, sort of self reliance, except yeah. that she goes to her totally. grandma to get goods. But still, yeah. she's it's, teaching them how to barter effectively, which is a good skill throughout your life, regardless. So yeah, she's doing them a courtesy service. Uh, yeah, that was a good analysis. It was just not as fun as uh, the... It was super fun. Like, <laughs> business is way more fun than nasty ship nonsense. <laughs> nasty ship not. Oh, man. Wow. Shots, shots fire. Okay. When it's, uh, when it's about Craig and Kit, it is. <sighs> Craig and Kit are cute, and they're just their friends. And Yes, they're yes, they are. They're other very things cute together, friends. And... Uh, right. It it would be a great romance. That when when do we have uh, two black kids in a romance on uh, children's TV? Like this, I think this is uh, two great, fantastic characters. I think I think it would be great um, if, if we eventually. I mean, that's direction. fair, but like, okay, my maybe I should say it this way. My concern whenever we kind of pair off characters, especially a main character 
with a female character is that like I don't want Kit to be about being mm. with Craig. I want her to be able to be her own person, and I think it, it'll become harder for her to just based on experience of what I've seen happen with these kind of ships coming to fruition. Is they they become all about each other, and Kit's not the main character, and I think for her to maintain her autonomy, she kind of needs to not be seeing anyone right now. Also, she's like what eight <laughs> right ten? now? Yeah, they're they're kids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't even want to think about it because it's like she, she's too young. She's got she clearly she has other things going on in her life anyway. So it's not a priority for her. Why should it be a priority for us? Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. I, and I think the show is uh, is doing a good job of not making it a, not making her in relation to Craig like her character. Like this is this uh, this episode I think does a good job with that. I do think this episode subtly mm-hmm. is is doing very very subtle romance with them, but it's that's not the point, right? It's about the the business with uh, Kit going and restocking the ice pops and their journey and getting into Kit's character. We see her grandma, so I think it's a, a fantastic presentation of Kit's character and in the shortcut. So let's dive inside a little bit more. Yeah. Wait, just quickly before we move off the shipping, we had Kelsey, we had. Uh, Craig, but where was JP and Maney? That they didn't. They haven't. Yeah, that's gotten, true. That's uh, our other big ship. They haven't gotten show. mentioned in like twenty episodes. There was like, like five well, seconds of the horse girls in one of these. There episodes. were the horse girls. Episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need Maney. More Maney. Come on, let's let's do that. Uh, uh, triple date episode with. Uh, <laughs> Oh my god! But it's obviously they're not thinking of it. They just like invite the each of them invites the other one to uh, to some event or something. Yeah, like okay, let's do it. Um, tea, the tea timers have to, like some some party. Okay, that that. Oh, they'll get a plus one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that's the ideal. That's the season finale. Okay, let's. let's but Craig could bring Jason. You know, he doesn't have to. That would bring be cool. Okay, okay. More on that. Yeah. More on that in a little bit. I'm also kind of shipping that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I have interesting thoughts on, on the, the Jason stuff, but there's the shortcut. Um, so the ice pops thing, Craig and, Craig and Kit are going to, uh, to going to Kit's, uh, grandma and, uh, we get Roger the troll. That's a, a big notable new character. He has these, uh, this, uh, 101 yeah. riddles book. Oh, uh, they're all the same. And, um, they on the way back they uh they stump him with this uh, ice pop riddle um th- r- what are our thoughts on roger roger's great he's the golem of the show so he's the best new character he's kind of the hardest character that i can the, to justify yes. that's a real person <laughs> yeah well, well craig's like you want to be a troll yeah yeah, like. <laughs> yeah trolls are cool like that's the explanation for his but, entire character but like he's very pale he's drinking water from an infected creek like i don't know how this kid is alive <laughs> he's a great immune He's protective of his TCs. Yeah, he's he's careful. Um, yeah, people people seem hype about Roger. Uh, yeah, <laughs> where are the people who are hype for Roger? Where can I meet them? I get the feeling somebody like drew this child and showed it to other people on the crew, and they're like, "Who's this? This is Roger. We have to put him in an episode. Yeah. This boy must see life." I feel like that's probably <laughs> that's, what happened. That seems. I kind of. Yeah, I like Roger. Well, Michelle's hype for Roger. I think that's one person. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, fair enough. The, fair crew, enough. the crew on Twitter seems hype for Roger, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think he's quiet. Cool. This this no, this character doesn't stand out as much as some others. It seems like a, a gimmick uh, here, but maybe it'd be fun to see Roger in some oh, other situations oh that are not uh, on the bridge. Uh, Roger uh, episode of Roger going outside his comfort zone. Um, <gasps> Leaving the bridge, yeah. yeah, yeah Maybe yeah. like he's homeschooled and like he'll have to go into the big city one day and wear real boy clothes, and it'll be this <laughs> huge issue for him. I want to see that. Yeah, really. Or, or they, they find uh, JP and the gang find a cave and they run into Roger again <laughs> because Roger <laughs> lives in the cave. I know again, yes. Roger, We've... big pinchy crossover. Bam. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he is friends with Big Pinchy. He definitely knows Big Pinchy. They got to know each other. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, his, yeah, his riddle book uh, being uh, all the all the same start to the riddle was pretty good. Um, and then we talked about Kit's grandma a lot. The the, the she gets the the big thing with Kit's grandma. That's where she gets her uh, her trading uh, thing business sense from, I guess, uh, because grandma is all about trading, and uh, I think it's it's pretty pretty fun. And she's trading uh, uh, Kit's trading her good uh, math gro- scores for. Uh, for the, the ice pops. Um, also, we learned Kit's real name, Kitherin. Kitherin. I yeah. like it. I, it's good. Was that the name of the American Girl doll? Was her full name Kitherin also? 
Mm. I feel like the pioneer doll was named Kit. Mm. Maybe Asuka, it, asking the wrong crap. Was also. But... <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point out. I'm really happy that Kit isn't like. You know, she has like a B minus. That's that's respectable, but not like amazing. I, I'm kind of glad she's allowed to be like pretty good, but she doesn't have to be like excellent. Yeah, I like, like that I her grandma. Of, her grandma like says like, "Oh, it's not an A," but she still yeah. like is okay it's with it. Yeah. yeah, but it's not a C. And she's like, "Hmm, that's a good point." Okay, you win. Like, I like that she's allowed to like not have to be perfect. That's yeah, pretty I like cool. That. I, I like that too. Yeah, a lot always with grades. It's, it's like, oh, it has to it has to be A's and perfect and stuff. And it's, it's this is good uh, messaging here. I think uh, about that. Um, I have important information. The full name of Kit Kittredge is Margaret Mildred Kittredge, and Kit is a nickname, so sorry. Oh, okay. That means Kit's name is more original. Yeah. Doll, which is pretty cool. Yeah, Kittredge uh, over Margaret. 2019. <laughs> Kitherine. Um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I, I, I really liked uh, Grandma, though, here. Kit, Kit's Grandma. I thought that was a pretty great sequence. And as mentioned extensively, she says, don't trade that boy anything for your heart. Um, oh, it's a good line. Um, uh, also, she, I think she's the one who says uh, happiness is the best kind of trade. Or is, or is that Kit who says that's that? Kit. That's I think Kit. that's Kit. Yeah. That's cute. Yeah, that's good. Um, meanwhile, Kelsey and JP are running the trading tree. And uh, Oh, Kelsey- I love I love it. They're they're trying their best, but they're both really bad. Yeah. <laughs> and I, uh... I, I think that this settles that Kit is is rarely going to have her own episode strength in the tree. Because I think it's just that nobody is capable of handling the trading tree like her. And when the trading tree is abandoned, the creek for some reason becomes an apocalypse. So a Kit is for now <laughs> bound to that location. Mm. Uh, yeah. However, I think that uh, we're the potential of a. Uh, romantic uh proto j training episode wow where, where cuz craig i think could handle the training uh, training. i don't know i don't know craig gets really stuck in his own head sometimes i feel like he might have like, a lot of pressure craig, craig could cuz in the episode kelsey's uh too strict and jp's too, too eager to make trades maybe craig's the middle ground here i don't know mm, maybe um, i think the best part of this is jp being like uh, lucky lucky rock <gasps> lucky, lucky rock sand. Lucky, yeah, this yeah. is our best day ever and kelsey's <laughs> like no <laughs> We yeah. need to stop this. It's, 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 uh, my, my, my favorite part is like, let's come to a compromise. We quit. Like, <laughs> the yeah. compromise is just they're about to leave. And then, of course, they show up with the ice pop, so they're all saved. But I, I like the idea. It's like, well, we can't agree. Let's just leave. Yeah, it, it, it was fun. Fun B plot here. Uh, that's kind of like a rare B plot for Craig. I feel like Craig is, usually doesn't do A, B here. So that's interesting. Um, plot structure. Uh, and they get the ice, ice pops back to the tree. Yeah, I think the shortcut solid episode. Good, uh, good to see Kit continuing to be one of the more major secondary characters on the show. Um, okay, interlude here because uh, good timing. Uh, I received the first Craig of the Creek DVD in the mail today from Cartoon Network. Um, so, uh, Wait. Really? Yeah, so okay. I'll, I'll plug that since we're doing the podcast now. Yeah, Craig of the Creek Itch to Explore is coming out on March 19th. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, so tw- it. This oh is God, this an ad know. read. <laughs> so this is a, I mean, look, I got it, and we're doing the same day as the podcast. Well, it's news, right? The, the first Craig uh, DVD. I think it's fun. Uh, How many yeah. episodes does it have? 13 episodes, and uh, which is more than usual for these like half se- like part season DVDs. And uh, it actually has a special feature. It has a whole animatic of the final book. Um, oh, that's very cool! Yeah, oh, wow. I'm, I'm probably did KO's that. DVD get anything like that in terms um, of special features? I don't remember. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> There's All a lot right. of these. We get they get sent a lot of these, but uh, yeah, I love the final book, so I'm actually probably gonna watch that animatic. That's that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, Craig DVD coming out. We're very happy that we're getting Craig merch and stuff. Yay! Um, so yeah, you, you, they usually do. Uh, these these uh, like se- season segment DVD. So this says season one part one. So we'll probably get season one part two. Anyway, okay. So next episode, what do we want to talk about next year? Um, Bug City, Bug but, City, <laughs> Bug City. Okay, well wait, what? Okay. what? Your hype about Bug City? Yeah, Bug City is one of those episodes that just like takes you back to being a kid. Like what kid didn't try to make little like dams out of sand for roly polies and ants to climb over and play with them? on the ground and pretend that you were like making a, a little house for them or something. I feel like that's a very kid thing to do. I definitely did that. Um, D- did you guys? <laughs> uh, well, I think the closest thing I did make like cities in the sand, like you make like yeah, the yeah. tunnels and stuff, 
But there would never be bugs on the beach. So, like, well, I mean, they're like like mosquitoes, but not like, you know, crawlies. Yeah, I, f- I feel I don't think I did. Yeah, I don't have specific memories of this, but adja- adjacent activity. Sure. Like this, this, this. Yeah, but like, like the, the whole building a miniature city part, that part I relate to because like, yeah. the, the idea of like imagining like, you know, a, 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 having a, an entire city in your hand. It's like Sim City, but in real life. <laughs> real, real bugs, real citizens. It's great. Yeah. Next level. Yeah, this episode is just The Sims. Exactly, it's Craig playing the The Sims. Um, that down to it, it, forcing them to stay in. Exactly, in that I love that. Yeah, uh, it's it's it, so easy. The, the plot being Craig uh, building this bug city, and then he's freaking out over it. Um, and uh, also notable is Mortimer, big Mortimer episode here. He's like that was so funny, terrorizing bug city, it's like Godzilla Mortimer, and then like the, the the just Craig screeching, and then you just have the full shot of him like quietly pecking. He's like Mortimer, no, and Mortimer's like what? And he just pecks harder and even faster. It's like he knows he's in trouble, but he's gonna keep going for it. Yeah, I, uh, probably the best Mortimer episode. He's fantastic. Um, I, I thought uh, the best part of this episode, and uh, now that I think about it, this is a big grandma uh, uh, run of episodes here. Uh, yeah. Craig's, yeah. Craig's grandma, I think, steals the show in, in this episode. She is so busy. Good for her. She's out there doing important stuff. Yeah, as a grandma, as a she, well, she's as a city council woman. She's uh, yeah. in in. She's there to. She's going into D.C. to talk to their senator about funding the library that uh, she and the city council are building, and she has like this uh, model of it. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a miniature library. Later, she makes an ant joke. So this is uh, all, this whole episode is a loose Zoolander reference. Um. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just let that sit there and you guys think about it. Yeah, I what is the what, what's the line in Zoolander? Uh something for ants. Learning center for ants. School for ants, yeah. This building yeah. needs to be at least three yeah. times the size. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I I guess I guess uh we could have revolved this around a Zoolander reference. I'm not sure that's what we're going for, but okay. Uh and we get <laughs> I think Craig and uh grandma at the end talking uh is is a great emotional moment for for Craig and a great bonding for them. And Craig says he wanted to be like, uh, he wanted to be like her and that's what he's motivating his behavior. And yeah, I thought it was great. Sweet. Yes. They're, they're, con- they're constituents, not constituents. constituents. Yeah. Oh yeah. I like, uh, Oh, I also really like grandma and, uh, da- Craig's dad's inter- uh, their interactions. Uh, it's like, I got a real knee slapper uh, for you. This one's going to be good. Like, uh, very wholesome. I think. Uh, dad and grandma talk, talking in this episode. Um, yeah, not a, not a ton there, I think, to, to get into. Anything else yeah. from Bug City? Um, it cribs a gag used often in OKKO OK where her sweaters say different messages yes. uh, every yeah. time we cut to her. So like I say, like, tough day Just when visiting. she's been rejected. It says hashtag funded when she's successful. So it, 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 it's it's a joke that has appeared elsewhere. Yes, we get Good the catch. Ha- hashtag shirt. Yeah, yeah, her, her 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 sweaters have been has been notable. So, um, yeah, would we'll, we'll love to see more of uh, Craig's grandparents in 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 more episodes. Um, let's talk Gre- Deep Creek Salvage. Um, this is the one I have the most notes for, and mm. uh, there's a lot of you liked this one. I love this episode. Um, this is it's it's this and uh, Great Fossil Rush are a little similar, which is that we have a concept here in Deep Deep Creek Salvage. We're searching for gold in Great Fossil Rush. We're searching for fossils, and we use that uh, foundation in order to do uh, do some creative like storytelling devices. We have different animation styles in Deep Creek Salvage. We have that dragon sequence in both have dragons, big dragon week as well. Dragons, grandma's ships. Uh, you know, we're dragons, seeing common themes among these. Ships. That's that's my band name. Yeah, that's the and, top uh, big three. <laughs> those those are the those are the themes I'm seeing uh, in, the, in the show. Um, but yeah, we just have we just have a lot of fun gags here, and we use it to just uh, have 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 some different jokes all around. Um, I think I think this format's a little familiar. You know, we have this basic kind of kid setup they're doing this they're looking for gold looking for fossils the bug city and then uh we use this in order to have some more of surrealist devices and gags and um it's it's happening a lot uh i think it's successful i think the show if it continues i guess this is the 
the the the Craig speech I had to give. The, the, I could just transitions into that. Um, I think like the show's always going to be good if it continues to do this type of thing. If it just stays with no plot and uh, very simple concepts, and then just does interesting things around them. Um, but I'm like selfishly worried for myself watching the show. Like, I'm not sure I'm going to sustain my lo- excitement level. Like, I think k- kids will always sustain their excitement level with this. Like, I think it's going to be a, a, a hit with kids. I think the show is, is fantastic. I just, I would, would like to see it evolve. And it, we are, you know, up there in the episode count. I'm going to move into season two at some point. Who knows when? So, um, I kind of would like some some ser- more serialization, some changing up of the, the format, because uh, definitely a lot of these episodes are feeling familiar, I think. Um, I, I would say that uh, in line with, with what you're saying of like this following a similar format, uh, I want to focus on like when they talk about what they're going to do with the money and you have the, the various sequences of Kelsey having her dragon of uh, JP becoming a superhero. And then Craig has like a cartoon drawing of him uh, uh, um, kicking out Bernard. So like those sequences, I feel like they've worked better in previous episodes. I, I didn't get as much into, into this whole side as I would have in previous episodes. B- uh, but I think also in, uh, a thing here is that we're, now we've, we're far enough in the show where we've had episodes like the kid from 3000, like Doorway to Helen, where like it keeps up the, the, the heightenedness of it for a full episode. So when you do the normal episode and then you fit in like two, two minutes of it, it doesn't feel as impactful now that we've had full episodes that go, that like really buy into the alternate uh, kid reality of things. So I, I also wonder about that, where it's like now that we know that they are capable of doing a full episode like that, if like these little sequences in the middle are no long. I mean, there will probably still be funny ones, but I'm saying like yeah, you can't rely on them as much as maybe they're they're doing. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think uh, two other episodes that kind of follow this format for me, Take Out Mission and Dinner at the Creek, kind of, uh, just the, these, these inserts. Mm-hmm. And they, yeah, I think the full, the full length ones have been better. Uh, like Cardboard City, that's not one we love as much, but I think that's one that just really commits to this one thing the entire time. I think that's also fantastic. Um, but, uh, that, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little, growing a little tired with this format. That being said, I do think I, for me, it was really successful, the, the three sequences of what they would do with the money, especially Kelsey C sequence with uh her pet komodo dragon brutus which is oh man <laughs> probably one of the highlights of it. well it's hers was the best style. because it's like very anime style and like mortimer has a giant forehead <laughs> so like at, <laughs> at least uh, at least that one was animated a little more interestingly yeah i think kelsey's is great the other two i'm not as crazy about that they're still fun but yeah we i want to talk about brutus here because uh <laughs> Go oh, ahead, Brutus. No, Brutus. Uh, I, I, I <laughs> rip. rip. I'm, I'm been in mourning for Brutus for weeks now, and I'm still not over it. Um, so yeah, Brutus sacrifices her life to to save Kelsey when save she's Kelsey. fighting a dragon. Um, wow. If only we all could have loyal uh, Komodo dragon pets like Brutus. Um, have you guys ever held a Komodo dragon? Or? No, have you? <laughs> no. Aren't they like huge? I, probably. And that's wait, why, why, wait, why'd you why'd you ask that question if you hadn't? What yeah, I, I wanted to know if you guys had an experience with the Komodo dragon because, like, I've never gotten close enough to one to like know what it's like. Because the they're idea of dangerous. a dangerous, they're well, like big. the idea of a pet Komodo dragon. Like, I feel like there are people who have it as a pet, but I've just never had the chance. I was wondering if you guys had the chance to know somebody <laughs> who had a dragon. I no, feel like I having heard. a pet Komodo dragon is like 10 tiers above having an iguana as a pet, and that's alone pretty rare. So, I don't, I don't know. I I wouldn't want to try. They're really buff and they're really big and they they're pretty carnivorous and just oh. uh, I think they eat everything and then they'd eat me, honestly. Would Brutus <laughs> try to eat Mortimer? Well, I think oh, so I think I think Brutus maybe. is an evolution of Mortimer. I think that's what this is. Uh, Mortimer is Kelsey's uh, winged companion, and then you got the the Komodo dragon, and then the real dragon. So these are like Kelsey's the real evolution, dragon the evolution stages. of Kelsey's fantasies. Uh, yeah, uh, her pets. Um, Bru- yeah, Brutus needs to appear in future episodes. It's 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 fan- she's fantastic. Um, J- JP's dream sequence is uh, he's getting this gold hand to become Silver Fist. Um, <laughs> I know. I love that he calls himself Silver Fist with the gold hands. <laughs> it's, it's not commented on, which makes yeah. 
Yeah. And when he passes it down to his grandson or whoever, he like punches him in the face with it to hand it off. And that yeah. just killed me for some reason. It was very slapsticky, but I just loved it. That's good. I also like that. It all makes sounds when I punch like a tennis player. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, Silver Fist. Uh, Craig is, uh, uh, in, yeah, another interesting uh, style here. He's going to buy Bernard's room. Um, and Bernard's gonna, he, I'm so miserable. Craig has my room, but also my respect. That's the, the, the line. Is, re- is, re- I mean, is respect another the theme? Woods, though. That's pretty nice. Oh, this respect is, is another theme, Alex. Wow. What a good Oh, my right God. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming together here. Um, but, uh, yeah. Okay. The rest of D Creek's out. Yeah. They, they find gold in the creek. Um, I like, uh, Kelsey ranting about the allowance structures rigged, man. Yeah. Um, I thought that's good. Uh, good counteraction to the uh, the kit capitalism uh, stuff. Yeah, the kit, 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 Kelsey. Oh, I love. Ooh, economic debate between Kelsey and Kit. How about that? As <laughs> that okay. sounds like a yeah, fun I'd, episode. I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd watch it. I, would, I like we, we'd, we'd them. Love, we'd love it. Okay. Um. Uh. They, 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 it falls in the creed. They want uh, maybe someone else could get it. Says Craig. JP says, Yeah, I've met me guys. You don't have to do the someone thing. Um, about getting going into the creek. I thought that was good. Um, and then he stares at it. At first, I thought he was in love with it, but then he's clearly just grossed out and repulsed by it and refuses to go in. Yeah, even JP will not. They do a. Uh, th- this has a bunch of like Craig's plans. We have a video call to the phone submarine. I like. I, I thought that was pretty cool, honestly. Like, I, I, I I'm kind of tempted to like try it one day if like no, I live near a river. Don't do ruin the don't don't get water on the phone. But yeah, I, see, I, whenever they put their phones and things, I'm like, well, and then they never saw their phone again because those things are not secure. And I don't want kids to try that. They're going to ruin so many smartphones. I know. And it looks so cool. So like, it's so it tempting. Cool. <laughs> but like I was looking at like the tape around it. I'm like, no, so much water would get through that bottle mm. and your phone would be rip. I would be rip. I, I think it's a good use of technology, though. I think the show is, is fun with you, them using their phones in, in various ways here. Um, I, and I really like that. Um, we get, we have, we have this random, like, song in the middle, like, uh, this montage of them getting, uh, gold in the creek, and then this, 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 the song, and, uh, set to the, or they're building the claw. That's what it's set to. The, with the dino grabber, the return of the dino grabber. Um, in this episode. And, uh, yeah, I thought that was a fun, uh, sequence. And, uh, then we get the, uh, huh, just like he drew it. And then Craig, uh, with the shades. Yeah. He puts the shades on. Yeah. yeah. I like that callback. Good. Yeah. Nice callback to very early. On. Was that, was that the pilot? Was it, uh, it was one of the very first, if might not have been the pilot, the first. but yeah, that's yeah. A, I can't, they keep playing that in the credits. So, um, this is a good callback there. Um, and, uh, then they get, they get the, the gold, but it's a candy bar. It has a uh, contest to win a visit to a candy factory, but then Kelsey looks it up and the company closed from having too many winning candy bars. In like um, the sixties. Yeah. And JP Loki still wants to eat it. And I'm really <laughs> glad they talk him out of it. He would die. I love the the Charlie Chocolate Factor, Willy Wonka, the Willy Wonky, Willy Wonka uh, gag here. I thought that was really funny um, at the mm-hmm. end of the episode. And uh, then they're they're happy that they cleaned up the creek in the process of getting the gold. Um, and we end in a very kind of environmentalist moment at the end. Yeah, see that I was a little weird weirded out by that because the way it ends is that they're all angry at the fact that they didn't get gold, and then Kelsey's just like. But hey, at least it's clean now. And, and then it was like, yeah. yeah, you're right. That's nice. It's like it yeah. kind of felt like an afterthought. I don't know. Like I, I, I think that there's a version of this episode that would have uh, focused a little bit more on the fact uh, on the cleanliness of it and like cleaning up the garbage. But this kind of treats it as just like a side effect. And it's like, oh well, let's feel good about ourselves for doing something that was meant for our own personal gain. It was a little tacked on at the end, but I think it's always kind of relevant to relate things to the creek at the end. So I still think it works and it's a nice moment to end on. Um, but, uh, it, it, the episode's a little bit, uh, stuff, ju- stuff, uh, juxtaposed together. It's, it's, you know, not, not so many common themes recurring, but I still, yeah, I really loved it. I think it's just like the most, um, meat here for, for like, uh, jokes and concepts and, 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 uh, I think, I think there's a lot to, to like in Deep Creek Salvage. Um, okay, we talked about the shortcut. Let's talk about Dibs Court. Um, Richard <laughs> calls Dibs on the stump, and uh, Richard is our favorite, as established. Um, uh, go away. Uh, Richard's 
Okay, he's not the worst, but I really don't like you. Well, who okay, is we're who not works? supposed to, but I, think I don't Richard know. I mean, I, I, yeah, because like I, I have more empathy for Jason now. So Jason's he's not, a, yeah, Jason's he's not, a good guy. Yeah, he's not the worst. Mm-hmm. But I guess like the 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 tea mm-hmm. timers, uh, Liza, maybe. Maybe but. they actively try to actually hurt people and get yeah. them to fight. That is worse than just. Taking something, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Let's. So I, I want to talk about this. Co- this episode works better, I think. If I mean, Al- Alex, are you familiar with the dibs concept growing up? Uh, n- I mean, I- I'm aware of it, but I don't. I, I didn't live in a, s- a community that invoked it th- like this, uh, um, this stringently or stubbornly. Okay. Yeah. Fair. So, so I, I feel like I did, and I think it's, it's. The, I think the con. This is this is a great deconstruction of dibs. I'm not sure Dibs was begging to be deconstructed, but it it is it goes really all in on deconstructing Dibs, and I, to be, Dibs is really annoying as a kid, and I definitely had nostalgia about this, so I think like it works in in that respect. Um, like uh, you know, it's 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 what the episode presents it. It's uh, just just saying it in uh, claiming anything, and. Um, it's uh you know so i think i think like the 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 concept is a good one in going in on this and uh but it, we we really we really dig into this um and then we there's a lot of shots of uh richard saying dibs uh and i think like the first five i think work and then like uh six to nine are a little much uh for me but um, did we actually get to nine did you count I I did not count. <laughs> that, was an, that was an estimation uh we get the elders here there's a big mark episode and uh, he's running the dibs court they're, they're um, fun. I think that yeah, the elders fun. Are, are fun. And like, I love you know, the get doing... up he gets in with the wig and the big cape or whatever. It's pretty yeah. funny. He's, he's funny. His gavel is a giant keg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good. I, my, my favorite part of the episode is uh, JP and Kelsey as witnesses. Um, uh, so J- Surprise JP's, witness! <laughs> JP, JP's, JP's the saliva specialist, and uh, he's just saying he licks everything, and that's uh, another form of ownership. I think that's good, too. And Richard um, the Butt just eats a cookie that someone has licked. <laughs> like, well, what is uh, what is wrong? He's, he's just savage, okay? Uh, just uh, eat the cookie. Kelsey, yeah, surprise witness Kelsey. <laughs> and she just pops out, and it's just, aww. <laughs> That's all. It's though. Surprise! <laughs> there was nothing to it. It was, and then Kel- Kelsey is just really the uh, uh, going for the cute factor here. She's uh, just getting everyone emotional talking about the the stump and uh, the, it being home for them. Uh, yeah, it's it, 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 she's she's great here too. Um, but yeah, she's Kelsey, the surprise witness. It's it's very dumb, uh, but it's good. And then they have they have a short recess, which is a literal recess on the the playground. And then uh, Craig's closing argument. Um, talk is his speech about dibs including this line if someone called dibs on elder rock the elders would have nowhere to argue about anime um (laughs) that's that's good um did we like craig's speech yes yeah it was was good Um, i I like the one i like the one line of can you call dibs on the wind and it kind of went downhill from there but like it was a strong opening (laughs) it was a good opening yeah it it was a good concept and then uh richard wins the dibs court but then we have dibs coliseum um and then Craig Craig gives up. This was very fast at the end. That of the was not where I thought it was going. I thought they were going to make the leap. Well, if you can mi- put dibs on anything, we'll just dibs the whole creek, and he'll have to forfeit the stump because it's in the creek that we call dibs on. Like I literally thought that's what they were going to do, and they're going to have to be like, wait, well, you can't have the whole creek because that's crazy. And then we were going to like just destroy dibs, but they didn't do that. They went to a coliseum, and I. I'm not sure that worked better, honestly. Uh, also, the, the, of that. the reason Craig cites when he's like, he's like looking at the fire going up and like they're getting ready to fight, he's like, no, I'm not going to stoop to your level. But he's the one who invoked this Coliseum. Craig is the one who did it. This, this <laughs> dude is just following yeah. along. Well, he, so, he does. He like, doesn't go through with it. I think that's the uh, important thing. He's sure. Doing. But he's like, I'm not going to stoop to your level. But what is this kid's level? I don't get what this kid is. You don't just... know his level. He can do. He's well, he's up for anything. He ate a licked cookie. Yeah, we don't know his level. Yeah, like what is? I'm not gonna. It's like some moral superiority that I don't get because this kid is nothing. He just keeps saying, "I, I got divs," and there's, there's no, there's no meaning to him. I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah, get him. Okay, okay, yeah, I don't think Dibs Coliseum really works. Um, but uh, Craig, Craig gives up, and then we declare JP the true owner of the stump because his name is on the stump. Um, Hooray, yeah. legal loopholes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of things at the end, and uh, 
I think we're also like, this is like a big uh, Kelsey secret room thing, which I kind of barely remembered. Um, but yeah, so I think there's fun parts to dips court, but it's, uh, it's not necessarily a highlight. Um, other, uh, other, other comments on dips court. Um, now that I'm thinking this, uh, do you remember that episode where like JP is the mediator between the two paintball clubs? Mm. I, I, I feel like, oh, yeah. I feel like that was similar where like it's a good idea, but for some reason like it doesn't it doesn't get there all the way. I wonder if there's just a problem here with this show and like legal proceedings. <laughs> like I, f- I feel like there's good good material there, like putting these kids in some kind of like mini courts. But for some reason, it just it hasn't it hasn't pulled through yet. OK, but, stay away oh. from legal. Maybe we shouldn't do our economic debate then. That's it feels too adjacent to legal proceedings. Yeah, although those yeah. are two compelling characters, like in the in the paintball, it's like the paintball kids that we yeah. barely see. Here, it's this Richard kid that we uh, that we just met today, and is, he's a real butt. But like you know, if <laughs> if you make it like if you make it the the crew versus a character we've seen that actually has legit beef, like that would be interesting, right? Like uh, I don't know, like Bo- Bobby feels wronged by these kids, and there's an actual court case. So like you know, like that that'd be much. Cool cooler yeah okay i mean yeah it's it's a it, good concept didn't work that well but it, it's okay um mm-hmm. the, the rest of the episodes are it's it's still some good stuff and the rest of the episodes are also very good so um let, let's talk about the great fossil rush i think the great fossil rush is the best of the five um i'm gonna i have a lot to say about this and uh because this, of jason's art, jason that why because jason 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 is hot take jason is the best secondary character on the show now at this point like he's gone from annoying villain that we hate to like genuinely a good character and i think we've just really dug i don't necessarily i wouldn't have necessarily like spent a ton of time characterizing jason like we have in the past uh 10 15 episodes but it's been successful i think i think there's a lot of um pathos with jason i think he's uh yeah i think he's uh this this episode especially getting into how he feels under under respected and appreciated and um his his relationship with craig i think is is continuing to really develop and shine um i i I think jason's really working for me honestly Jason's working for me too. I wouldn't say he's the second best character on the show. No, the best secondary but he's character. He's definitely he's he's coming into his own for sure. I mean, isn't Kid also a secondary character? Yeah, I, 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 think, I, right, I think I like I like Kid a lot more than Jason. I think it's, I find it's, her it's, a lot it's, more it's him. It's him or Kid. I think is the the two most developed secondary characters. Yeah, um, yeah I agree with that. But I think for me, Kit shines outshines jason because we haven't had a lot of jason growth this is like kind of the first we're really digging into it on a deeper well, way i think uh the 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 big pinchy big pinchy was a big jason episode with uh, craig and jason yeah but well. big pinchy was an episode we had that episode with the tea time people where also craig yeah, and jason seem to have come to some sort of agreement of it, yeah yeah, well, my my thing is I, I want to see if this actually sticks because I feel like the previous two episodes covered similar ground and it didn't the end up reset, sticking. kind of. Yeah, yeah. so like I, I, I need to see if this actually affects Jason at all or if we're going to go back to him being a, sort of annoying but maybe less annoying than he used to be. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't trust Jason, I, I don't trust uh, Jason based on episodes we've talked about in the past. Like, hey, the, look, there, it seems like Jason is getting more characterized and like sort of like realizing why he's annoying. But then we begin here pretty much in exactly the same place that Jason always begins. So that it, it makes me wonder. But I, I it, in the in the in the focus of this episode, I agree it's good. Like you, you portray as like, hey, he's actually saying helpful things, but in a very annoying way, and that's why he's being misinterpreted. Although I don't feel that that has been the case for Jason in previous episodes, so mm. I also think that maybe there's some like inconsistency going on. I mean, there. I think I think it's not that he's necessarily saying helpful things. I think it's that he's he's that he thinks he's his motivation is off. He's not thinking like the the real. Uh, Forest Scout, he's he's at the end. He says he picks up the chakra roll and says Forest Scout always uh, helps out, and he's a little bit selfish motivations. Um, but uh, so he he needs he's a perspective change here. I feel like uh, is is where we're going no, with this. definitely. I yeah. think post pre this episode, Jason he he liked being copy. He he liked kind of being a know it all and being in charge. And in this episode, Craig confronts him with that directly. He's like, why are, why are you even? a junior forest ranger is it to tell people what to do or is it to actually help kids out it seems like jason makes a very conscious decision to shift his 
his mentality around the whole thing to actually being helpful and not just being the boss of other kids. Yeah, so. and even and even when he's being selfish, he is he's like it's like generally in the realm of helping people. Like I think that's what this yeah, episode like, is getting like into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the forest essentially. Right. But he's yeah. doing it from like a selfish perspective. He's like doing trying to do helpful things, but like everyone is put off by it because he's so transparent about uh, uh, being self serving and stuff. And and here that we're like establishing a perspective change. Big scene b- before the chakra roll thing with um, Jason saving them after the uh, they are uh, the the dam. The breaks and uh, the cra- the cra- cra- creek water comes back, um, and uh, Jason saves uh, Craig, Kelsey, and JP, and then he runs away. Um, and this g- here's my big thing. Okay, so this is, I have a whole thing about this that I thought of uh, just now, um, a little bit before the podcast, but this is very fun. So this moment really reminded me of the Blue Spirit the episode of Avatar, where Zuko in mask saves Aang and then runs away right when Aang tries to be friends with him at the end. Uh, very, I think it's inspired by the blue spirit. I think Craig is <laughs> okay. Aang and Jason oh, is Zuko boy. and D- Jason is Zuko. Uh. That's his entire character. That's what he's based around. This episode also invokes water bending when J- JP oh, is like, water powers oh, right. activate. I was waiting for you to get to that. <laughs> Kelsey is Katara. JP is Sokka. Jason <laughs> is Zuko and Craig uh. is Aang. It's all an avatar allegory. I'm telling you. Uh, and so this is what's going to happen with Jason and Craig is Jason, like, it's not like Zuko's suddenly good after the blue spirit. He, he ran away. He wasn't willing to own up to it. But although at the end, the chakra roll thing is more than Zuko ever got at that point. So I think we're going to get a little bit more of Jason being, um, antagonistic and, uh, he, he's not, not going to truly come around until his uh, season two. And then he'll start to start to be good again. We think he's good. And then he'll uh, end up we're gonna have again, Jason then, yeah. alone yeah. and he's yes, going to go yes. on his so. <laughs> All searching junior ranger quest in the creek. Oh, yes. okay. Well, Whatever I mean, I would I watch that yeah. if it happened. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I'm telling you, I did the big. This is the big uh, discovery I made. Jason is Zuko. Yeah. Can, okay. I'm glad. I don't know that the discovery it, as much as it is just a fan dream. <laughs> no, I think <laughs> well, I think yeah. Jason is inspired by Zuko. I think they wrote the show this way. Can, can we skip to the part where like Wildernessa is Korra and Kelsey is Asami? Can we can we skip to that? Yes, that 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 is true. Though. Much yeah. more, yeah. yeah. That's good too. Um, but we, I said Kelsey was uh, Katara. We got to keep it in the timeline here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, I'm like I, at the very least, uh, somewhat kidding, but at the very least, I do think this moment definitely really reminded me of Blue Spirit. So I, I wonder if that was intentional. Um, yeah, but, I, I think this hinges on you believing that Jason will be a main character, and I really hope he's uh, not a main character. So maybe that's why I'm having a hard time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think he'll stay in his current major secondary character role, but eventually he'll be part of uh, part of the the, the, the uh, on the side of. Uh, Craig, whatever side that is in being good and not uh, antagonist. I, d- I do think Jason Demption, we are fully in the throes <laughs> of De- Jason Demption. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Um, and we'll get there. We'll get there. Still early. Uh, other, other, okay. What, what else we got this episode? So, uh, JP's, uh, finds this fossil and we get this fossil rush and we see a montage of people dig, groups digging for the fossils, which I love. The horse girls were looking for fossils. The science kids. Which yeah, they seen. get on it. Yeah, uh, we need more more science kids and the eight speeds as well. We're looking for all the fossils. I I think the show is underutilizing its wide, uh, really wide, excellent cast of minor characters. I do think it should do more things like this and just pan across. I I think like, it's trying to not overuse a bunch of people, but I think it's like mm-hmm. under in in the process is underutilizing them because um, it has been it- a lot of episodes. I think the thing is, like, they they don't want to detract from the fact that there are three main characters and no more. But at the same time, they have done a really excellent job at making all these amazing secondary characters that we honestly want to see more of. So they're trying to figure out that balance. I agree. I want to see more of all those kids again. But the show is ultimately about the main three. So I feel that's got to be their focus. For yeah, now, that's, de- that's definitely the thought process is the shows about the main three we should keep with, you know, but it, like the thing is the show, it's mm-hmm. such an excellent wide cast of minor characters. And like, how is this the first time we've seen the science kids since, uh, since Doorway to Helen? Like, uh, let, yeah. like we, we should dig in more to, to some of these people. Uh, 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 Dibs Court, we also had a brief shot of the sewer queen. It's been a while since yeah. the sewer queen. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, I just, 
I don't know. It's 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 t- time is short sometimes on TV. Let's let's really dig into the the strengths of the show. Um, although Craig, you know, Craig is having a second season. Hope I think it's uh, pretty popular among kids. Hopefully, a lot of longevity here. Um, other okay, con- continuing on. Uh, Jason's trying to help, and uh, Craig's like, "Why you got to scout splain everybody?" Yeah, um, that was hilarious. Yeah. I loved I like it. That. Also, love JP's. Uh, he he said he had a plan to revive the dinosaurs, raise them on an island sanctuary. I would have named it after me. <laughs> JP, Jurassic Playhouse. JP, Jurassic Playhouse. <laughs> I'll, JP always has some of the best lines, and this proves it again. Yeah. It's so good, yeah. Um, uh, that was... Uh, that that was like wow was jp made for that for that exchange for that line there he had dino grabbers before like has it all been building up to that one gag oh he's the <laughs> dino grabbers it's true I feel like we were planning this for a little while it was, it was good more and more jp jurassic park jokes let's let's do that um oh yeah we already talked about the the meat of this episode which is the wilderness uh sequence so uh, we'll <laughs> that, that, that's the meat <laughs> that's the, that that's is, the thing that's we really the that's meat. the thing we care about no we t- also talked about jason uh yeah the jason uh uh, character development. He's uh, damning the creek. He thinks no one respects him. And then uh, they dismantle oh. the jam. And JP's like water powers activated and then uh, saves them and the Chocorilla. Okay, there you go. So, uh, really strong Jason, really strong Wilderness X Kelsey, JP, Jurassic Park joke. Um, we see some of the minor characters in a sequence, uh, some of the standout characters. I think this is a great episode. Well, good I'm for you. I'm becoming more convinced. But <laughs> good for you. I mean, there are so many good ones. I feel like yeah. I, I'm kind of with Alex on Bug, Bug City and The Shortcut being my top ones. But I think this is probably the, my third fave, The Great Fossil Rush. I mean, Bug City is nice, but... Uh... It just, I, I f- it feels so, so nostalgic for me. So I okay. have like a very personal reason to like that, it. That, that's, that's definitely yeah. fair. I think Craig is a very personal, uh, nostalgic type hit. It hits on that. So, uh, definitely don't blame any particular episode for really, uh, hitting, hitting that, that narrative. I don't think there's anything that like really hit for me in this batch. Dibs was the thing that was most, uh, that, that most hit that, but it wasn't like I had a very personal connection to Dibs or anything. <laughs> um, and- I just real I, I forgot to mention I had this hidden in my notes, but I forgot to bring it up until now. Uh, Richard is voiced by Zachary Steele, who voices Ronaldo on Steven Universe. So maybe that explains some no! things about why he's an oh, no! is, he, is he also the el- no! the third elder? Or is uh, that he, someone? Yeah, else? he's David. Uh, yeah. Okay. So David's under you. D- David's that's cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, David's okay. fine. Well, Ronaldo's a great character, but this don't, dude's guy. Don't, uh, don't bring that name in this beautiful <laughs> show. I will say that the elders are the iteration of Ronaldo that is fun. Yeah, and they're sympathetic, Ronaldo. And yeah, yeah. Ronaldo's just too bad. Like he's just not good. Ronaldo would be great friends with them, though. He would he'd oh, fit he right would. in. Be bad for them because he give them all katanas and tell them to go <laughs> bother people's lives and it would just be terrible. They can yeah, just bond I, over I, a koala princess. Yeah, they, they I'd like to think that like Ronaldo would try to hang out with them, but the the, the, the elders would think that he's too like hardcore and they'd kind of like try to keep their distance. <laughs> I would love that. I would love that. It's like uh, because you know, like, like there are levels of anime nerds where they like are a little too obsessive, and like the chill ones are like, "Hey, hey, calm down," you know. So it's I like- think the elders are pretty obsessed. Uh, I, I don't. I would think you're giving them a little credit here, um, but yeah. Okay. Any 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 final thoughts on uh, Michelle on this batch? Um, I want to see more Wildernessa, and I want to see more of the Sewer Queen. That's what I yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'd count Sir Queen as really being in the episodes, but uh, that it was enough for Alex, was it? Or she was, in, it just... she was in five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was five seconds, but yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe like two point five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that your final thought, Alex? And uh, lamenting the lack of Sir Queen. Um, yeah, that's part of it. Um, but I, I, I don't think I've highlighted enough that like it's still a funny show. I think that Kelsey gets a lot of good lines. JP gets a lot of good lines. So like I, I appreciate that part of it. Like it's still making me laugh. And so like Craig of the Creek is still a great show. Uh, it, and the consistency was keeping 
for almost all the first season, like it, that was a very impressive feat. So like it, it's kind of like at some point it had to have episodes that I didn't enjoy as much, but that doesn't, but that is by no means a, a reason to like say that the, the show itself is going downhill because really it's still like, if you consider the whole, whole group of work, it's still a great, great uh, show. And like a, a couple of these episodes are still like on par with uh, everything that Craig of the Creek has done so far. So Craig of the Creek, good show, still good show. Yes, I don't. I, I don't. I don't think. Uh, you know. I. I think. I think Dib Squirt's uh, still good. I think it's. 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 It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not below some of the other so slightly lower episodes recently. So I, I think. I think the show's still on a uh, very consistent, still on a good streak. I think the thing I'm missing is another huge standout episode like Doorway to Helen and Kid from Thirty Thirty. So I, I'm. I'm craving that. Um, I'm sure they're some, coming. Maybe this next batch, which has a lot of promising uh, the titles, titles and descriptions, are out, including Alone yeah. Quest, uh, Kelsey, uh, Kelsey Alone, and uh, apparently Bobby's dying. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> so Wait, gonna... Bobby's the kid who likes candy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him. Bobby can't die. Sorry, well, he's we, getting we killed. We didn't off. mention he was also sucked the melted ice pops from the yeah. ground oh yeah he he's a thirsty hungry boy he needs his sugar <laughs> he, yeah, he I, I like that the description of that is when the pillar of the creek community leaves <laughs> <are> <laughs> look bobby, bobby is a pillar i'm glad he's giving his due respect under uh, of the show. <laughs> whoever's writing these descriptions properly respects bobby i think that's yeah, what i would say exactly. he, he really is a pillar um, and also getting Return of the Honeysuckle Rangers, which I'm very hyped. About. Yeah, hype for the Honeysuckle Rangers. Well, so I see people speculating on the the Craig subreddit, by the way, r slash Craig of the Creek plug that uh, that this is a uh, more of a serialized batch of episodes. Maybe there'll be more plot stuff in here. I think that will be fun. Well, we will see. Um, this will be all throughout March, including two on the 18th and two on the 25th of, of March. So they're going to get. How, how does Bobby fit into the lore of Craig of the Creek? <laughs> I think Bobby leaving triggers a series of events. Yeah. <laughs> If nobody wants candy, then maybe they stop going to the trading tree and then kids oh, out of no. business and oh, everyone goes no. home and they don't play the creek anymore. There he solves it for you. And then the <laughs> other side the, the other <laughs> side of the creek uh, moves in on Kit's territory and then Yeah. The yeah and they take cool. it over. What if the other side stole Bobby? What if that's what's going on? Oh no. <laughs> Free Bobby. Free- stole him away. <laughs> Oh, no, they kidnapped the poor kid. I don't know. I don't know oh, if no. I can. I don't know if I can make it to uh, memories of Bobby. Yeah, it's gonna be too traumatizing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we'll see. So, fun stuff coming March. Let us know you thought of these February episodes of Craig at overlyadmitted uh, in the comments section of this, or on the comment section of our YouTube at youtubecom slash overlyanimated. Uh, you can also come discuss Craig with us on our Discord at overlyanimated slash Discord where we have a, a Craig of the Creek channel and you can support us via Patreon at patreon.com slash overly animated. Thanks to our current patrons, special patron podcast, Alec, AK Frozone. And thanks as always to our patron executive producers, John Ryan, Steve, Alex, and Hugh. Um, yeah, we'll probably do uh, the March batch at the end of March. Um, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe there's going to be something so, uh, so huge, like the Bobby episode. We'll have to come on immediately and talk about it, but um, <laughs> pr- probably, probably at the end of March for that. And uh, other stuff at overly animated.com, including, Genlock, Promise Neverland coverage. Uh, we had a Lego Movie 2 podcast. Um, some interesting stuff coming up this weekend. We had Dragon Prince uh, Season 2. Um, find all that at overlandmated.com. Thanks for listening, guys. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Adios.